Borderline Personality Disorder A disorder of one's personality. I have gotten my very first video request. This comes from a patron, which if we're going to speak about Patreon, let's just do it, get it out of the way. Patreon is where you can get awesome BPD videos that you don't get on YouTube. Also, you can request videos, and I legally have to make them. But if you want to check that out, the link's in the description below. Legally, I have to do this video now. The request was if I could talk about BPD rage. Rage and BPD. Borderline personality disorder and rage. Is there a connection between the two? Does having rage make you a borderline? Or does being borderline make you rage? These are all questions that nobody has an answer to. If they say they do, they're a shim sham man. Nobody likes a shim sham man. Not even the shim sham man. And wow, you'll be saying wow in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. Follow me, camera guy. M. Wow. This is how to order. As always, I must first off state that I can't speak for every borderline. I, we're all very unique. We're all different. It makes us hard to deal with because we're also very different. Nor can I speak of any true facts on the condition of borderline personality disorder. I'm only speaking from my own personal experience with it, with being somebody that has it. That being said, we shall move on to the part where I sound like I know what the hell I'm talking about. From what I've gathered, research has shown me that individuals with BPD usually also have anger control issues as well. Oh, you're not taking your wife out on the leg that we've been money for! I have had anger issues for as long as I can remember, but I've only had BPD for three years. I mean, granted, I had BPD, but I was only diagnosed three years ago. In my brain, BPD only happened three years ago. Once I knew about it, then it's real. Before that, I, it's almost like I caught the borderline, you know? Three years ago, I caught it, and now it's just pfft, stuck. I wish they had a vaccine. Rage, on the other hand, I've had as far back as I can remember. Uncontrollable, burning, fiery rage that makes you want to just destroy, obliterate everything in sight and not stop until it's all burned down, destroyed, ripped apart. That can even be your life. You could want to burn your life down. You're so angry and pissed, you want to just destroy everything that has taken years to accumulate, to build up a reputation. It takes years to build up a reputation. It only takes one moment to destroy it. This is a very difficult topic. I'm very conflicted. I can see both sides of it. I feel both sides of it. I've felt the burning hot rage where I'll destroy everything, and I've also been able to be in situations where I don't lose control and I could see the ridiculousness of that situation. Or even a better example, where I see somebody else rage and I have nothing to do with it. I'm just a bystander being able to watch someone acting the way that I do. See them in that self-destructive pattern where I know they're going to destroy the things they care about. I also know I can't stop them. The saddest thing of all is I know that they cannot stop themselves. As much as I understand it, I, kn I can't do anything to prevent it. I can't help them. Same with me if I go into a rage and nobody can help me. It's got to be something the individual has to deal with, which is very difficult since the rage is something you cannot control. I like to say I regulate my emotions. It's probably a lie. It's not necessarily true. I just call it regulating my emotions. What I actually do, I don't allow myself to get angry. I I see warning signs. I have rules. I have a lot of rules when it comes to talking with other people, especially about things that might get heated or become an argument. I have so many rules in place that before I lose control, before I go into this rage, there are so many red flags that tell me to abort, to finish this conversation later, to it's not worth it. I know how it's going to end, and at that point, 
I still have enough control that I can walk away. I can just, I mean, sometimes it's hard. But if I don't listen to those warning signs, if I don't realize the things that that I'm going down that road, if I think I can handle it, then I will lose control and destroy everything. When I'm in a rage, when I do lose it, I feel like I'm a passenger. I can see what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I cannot control it, though. I am horrified at what I'm doing and can't understand it. But there's this red hot burning in my chest that feels like it's going to burn everything. And this burning red just heat just wants to destroy everything. That's its purpose. That's its, it cannot survive unless it's destroying. And I enjoy it. I'm having fun destroying. At the same time, I'm a passenger. I'm horrified by what I'm doing. And I know that there's going to be consequences and that I'm going to lose everything. But that burning hot rage just doesn't give a shit at all. It does not care. I'll give you an example. I packed up my car, I quit my job, and I was headed into the great wide open. I had $3,000 cash. I figured with three grand, I could survive a while, at least long enough that I could find some side jobs or some ways to make money. Maybe I could hustle or something. Within four hours of quitting my job, packing my car with what... I now own, I found myself in a casino with three grand. I can actually win at poker sometimes. I lose more than I win, but at slots, I always lose. It's just no, I'm going to lose. So I'm at this casino. I've got three grand. Am I going to go to the poker room like I should? No. What I do is I find... Anybody that's anybody knows that the slot machines you do not want to play in a casino are the ones that are all big movie themed ones that take up. In this machine, you just walk into the slot area and it's just the grandest, biggest freaking thing there. Each spin costs like two bucks or something per spin. When it pays out, it pays out good, right? I played for a while and soon found myself down a grand. Now I only had 2,000 left. I could have still walked away. I had not lost control yet. The burning was in my chest. That fiery burning was there. I was going to make it back and then leave. I was going to get my grand back. You know, this machine, all I needed to do was hit a bonus. I'd be golden. Get the hell out of there. That was my plan. Second grand that I spent was gone within like 15 minutes, just super fast. I didn't win. It was just took my money. I, it bent me over. It, and didn't even bother to have the decency to give me a reach around. Oh, no. <laughs> At this point, that rage took over. I was pissed. I was pissed. I only have $1,000 left. Now, I could leave upset at myself for being stupid enough to have lost that two grand. I could have done that, but I didn't. No, what I did is I said, you know what? Screw it. I want to walk out of here with nothing. And at this point, I could have won that two grand back, and I still wouldn't have left. Because then breaking even wouldn't have been good enough. I would have wanted it all. What is all? All is the number of, I will never reach it. I would have sat there no matter what and played till I was broke. Because the rage had taken over. I wanted it. I was so pissed that it had already taken my two grand. That I was going to make sure to make it the worst possible situation possible. I just popped your skull so hard, your eyeball just popped out! I was doing max bet, just playing stupid, yelling at the machine, you know, here, take all my damn money, just take it all! I'm just a loser, I've always been a loser, until I was completely broke, penniless. No job, nowhere to live, my stuff in my car, penniless. 
Shortly afterwards, the anger subsided, and I came back to my senses. And it's, what the what the hell were you doing? You just set yourself up for failure. And that's how the rage is. That was a really actually not bad. There were no people involved in that. I just screwed myself over. The rage was mostly directed at me. It's really bad when you get that feeling, but it's directed at someone you really love, or care about, family, loved ones. I ain't gonna stop until I have burned every bridge until you hate me beyond belief. I will go to any lengths to make you hate me that bad because I'm gonna burn it down. Rage doesn't go away until I've destroyed it all to a point where there's no way I can get it back. And then I'll come to wondering why I did it. Still remembering how much I enjoyed doing it. At the same time, I was yelling at myself not to because I didn't want to lose everything. Does that describe any of you? Let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that other YouTube BS you already know about. Be sure to hit up the Patreon page. Oh yeah, there's rage on that like button. Just rage all over it. That sounded pornographic. Until next time, keep on keeping on. Motherfucker. That's right, you heard me. Fuck Rick Grimes. Do you have any idea who you're talking to? Shut up! Don't be on you! Get out! Shut up! Do you have any idea who you're talking to? Don't be on you! Get out! Who you're talking to? Fuck Rick Grimes. Back off! Go, Mr. Get moving, go! Oh. Don't be on here! Get out! Oh. All his talk leads to nothing. Rick Grimes ain't nothing. Hey, watch your mouth! Your friend's drawn up! Don't be on here! Get out! You almost died once for these people! This is you, not me! Fuck Rick Grimes. Don't be on here! Get out! Don't know why anybody would follow this. Nobody. Do you have any idea who you're talking to? Who made him the leader? Shut up! Everybody dies Shut when up. they're hanging with Rick Grimes. Any idea who you're talking to? It's a Rick Tater ship. Rick Tater ship. Rick 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 Tater ship. Shut up! Do you have any idea who you're talking Don't to? Don't be on here! Get out! Don't be on here! Get out! Idea who you're talking to? Do you have any idea who you're talking?